I found 52,000 positive reviews for these speakers online. Seriously, 52,000 reviews, of which 97% are positive uh, here on Jindon.com, which is JD.com, uh, China's equivalent to Amazon. And please accept my apologies, there's, there's head that problem noise today here, uh, as you can see from the shots in my balcony. The Edifier R2000DB feature a 500 color woofer, uh, which is rear ported, and uh, a 2.5 cm or 1 inch silk dome tweeter. They pack quite a punch with 60 watts RMS uh, of power per channel. Each speaker is actually bi-amplified, which means that there is a separate cha amplification channel for each tweeter and each boomer. The crossover is handled by a quite potent DSP from Texas Instruments uh, that provides more than 101 de decibels of dynamic range, which is pretty good, and uh, with a flat frequency re response from 20 to 20,000 Hz. If you don't understand all this, uh, just know that on paper these speakers look rather promising and their design strongly suggests that they have been inspired by studio monitors. By the way, you can pause the video if you want to read something that is scrolling too fast. Edifier announced a frequency response for these speakers of 55Hz to 20,000Hz, but that was actually able to test the bass down to 48Hz uh, with adequate response, which is quite impressive considering the small size of these speakers. I first set them up in my living room and was pleasantly surprised by the sound they produced. They're definitely tuned for consumer hi-fi with exaggerated bass and treble, but they provide, ni provide nice dynamics and good bass extension. Very smooth treble, actually. Um, a surprisingly good listening experience. From a Bluetooth perspective, I own the Bose SoundTouch 30, one of the better monolithic uh, Bluetooth speakers out there or smart speakers out there. The Bose has some cool networking features, but I honestly don't really use them. But it doesn't sound nearly as good as these edifiers, even though the Bose retails for about double the price of the edifiers in the US and actually almost triple the price in Europe. The edifiers uh, sound more balanced, uh, they pack more oomph and their stereo imaging is far superior since you can spread them, uh, which is impossible to do with a monolithic speaker uh, like the Bose uh, sometimes 30 or other Bluetooth speakers. Bluetooth works well, although I did get disconnected once, maybe because of the numerous Wi-Fi's in our high-rise building here in China. But basically, if you're looking for great sounding desktop or living room speakers with Bluetooth in this price range and don't need them to be smart, uh, you can stop watching this video here and buy these speakers. They're the best bang for the buck, at least as far as I know. And no, I'm not sponsored by Edifier, I bought these with my own money. I used to be a sound engineer and uh, recorded albums for famous artists and not so famous artists. Looking at their specs before buying, I did hope that they would let me do some home studio monitoring, uh, as I didn't completely give up music. I've owned a bunch of different uh, studio monitors over time. The most notable ones that I really liked were the General X 1031A. Uh, I think they were about $4,000 and I've had these for many years because they were present in most of the higher-end recording studios in the 90s when I, when I worked in this space. For my desktop, I wanted something that doesn't require speaker stands, so uh, the size of the General X is completely out. They have 8-inch woofers and they're huge. Another thing that caught my eye was the slanted design of the edifiers, uh, which com makes completely sense when you're sitting close to your speakers looking at your monitor. On my desk, I have the edifiers plugged into a Focusrite 2i2 audio interface. Initial listening impressions were not so good, uh, the exaggerated bass response does muffle the overall stereo imaging and uh, my sound engineer ears were not comfortable and did not compute. When uh, making music I need detailed mids, tight flat bass and uh, just a touch of bright to feel comfortable uh, when mixing or producing. But I found a solution. I rolled a pair of my best Lycra socks and uh, proceeded to plug them into the bass reflex ports on the back of the speakers. Then after some listening, uh, I rolled back treble and bass to about the 9 o'clock position on the controls on the back of the active speaker. Et voila! These now sound better than uh, Yamaha's HS5 if you know those. Those are uh, studio monitors. The stereo imaging is quite similar, uh, but less fatiguing because I think the tweeter on the edifiers is actually better. Sorry Yamaha. Bass is still a little bit strong, but uh, it's decent and doesn't hurt the mid-range, uh, so you get very good stereo imaging. And these speakers now really reveal bad mixes now. Uh, it's quite easy to process sound on them, and the good ones actually do sound really good. Character-wise, and of course with a pair of socks, they're closer to General X or Mackies, if you know these. 
Uh, now I'm not talking about the little tiny CR4s or CR3s from Nike, uh, I'm talking about the big 8 inch speakers. They're less bass heavy than KRKs for instance. If you like the Yamaha's NS10, you will find these a little bit too hi-fi-ish. But for all the rest, uh, I think it's possible to make music with these speakers. A music that will translate to other speakers well afterwards. Everything is not perfect with these speakers however. At full volume, the edifiers produce a hiss at rest. Uh, it's not monstrous, but it's certainly annoying. Uh, now, to be fair, like uh, most budget studio monitors struggle with this, uh, and even my $4,000 General X had a slight hiss um, at rest. The workaround with the edifiers lies in the remote. Uh, basically, you set your uh, audio, your sound card to maximum output, and you control the revo listening volume with the remote, uh, and uh, you get rid of the hiss like that. Problem solved. Speaking of the remote, it works but it's small and feels quite cheap uh, and it's actually so small that I've misplaced it, I can't find it uh, as I'm recording it so I can't, I don't have it. <laughs> it's gone. I wonder if the two little monkeys that live here had anything to do with it but so far interrogation was completely unsuccessful. Finally, you obviously don't get balanced input so make sure that your uh, studio sound card allows uh, an unbalanced connection uh, or alternatively use the Toslink uh, input the uh, optical or digital input with the uh, provided cable. Now full disclosure I didn't test the digital analog converter but the specs look good on paper. So yes uh, I'm confident to say that you can use these speakers as studio monitors well uh, home studio monitors. There are better solutions out there for sure uh, but not at that price range at all uh, at least to my knowledge and I've heard quite a lot of monitors. But if you know other speakers that have such a great price performance uh, please comment below. From my experience, you'll probably pay double to get something equivalent from the renowned uh, studio monitor brands out there. I'm obviously very happy with my purchase, uh, even more so because they come at a lower price tag here in China. They're at about $150 retail. And uh, they do come with a party mode, basically you remove the pair of socks. And uh, so I highly recommend them. That's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed the video and please hit like if you did and uh, do subscribe if you want to see more gear reviews almost live straight out of China. Until next time.